Welcome back to Sovereign RPG. Today we're delving into a recent interview with Grinding Gate Games developer Jonathan, where he shed light on a variety of Path of Exiles 2 features and mechanics. This interview provided valuable insights into the development process and confirmed some key aspects of the upcoming sequel. One of the first topics addressed was stash tabs. Jonathan confirmed that any stash tab currently available in Path of Exile 1 will be available in Path of Exile 2 from the start. This ensures players will have access to familiar organizational tools for their items and currency. However, stash tabs associated with League-specific mechanics such as Blight will only be added to Path of Exile 2 when those mechanics are implemented. While confirming the presence of existing stash tabs, Jonathan also expressed his personal reservation about quad stash tabs. He acknowledged that the reduced size of item icons within these tabs can make it difficult to discern items at a glance. However, he understands the significant organizational benefits they provide to players and recognizes their overall value outweighs his visual drawback. The potential inclusion of target dummies in Path of Exile 2 is also discussed. Jonathan acknowledged player requests for this feature but highlighted the design challenges involved. Determining appropriate stat values for dummies, such as resistances and armor presents a complex balancing act. He proposed potential solutions including dummies with no stats or separate dummies representing normal and boss level enemies, indicating a willingness to explore this feature further. Moving on to the gameplay mechanics, Jonathan clarified restrictions surrounding boss encounters. Players will be unable to use portals to leave a boss fight mid-encounter preventing escapes or strategic repositioning outside the boss arena. Similarly, changing equipment during a boss fight will also be prohibited, forcing players to commit to their gear choices before engaging. And to address potential connectivity issues, Path of Exile 2 will feature a 6 second disconnect timer. If a player experiences lag exceeding 100 milliseconds, the instance will pause, allowing time for the connection to stabilize. However, if the lag persists beyond a 6 second threshold, the player will be disconnected from the instance. This mechanism aims to prevent unfair deaths due to severe lag while also ensuring the integrity of online gameplay. Now regarding character names, Path of Exile 2 will retain the existing system from Path of Exile 1. Character names will remain unique without numerical discriminators. However, if a character remains inactive for one year, its name will be released back into the available pool. If another player claims the name, the original character will be flagged for renaming upon next login. Jonathan also touched upon the new Rune and Soul Core system. He confirmed that players cannot over socket runes, meaning only one rune can be socketed into an item at a time. While runes themselves will be relatively common, acquiring powerful soul cores will be more challenging, encouraging players to engage with this new crafting system. Then addressing concerns about mana sustain, Jonathan stated that mana leech will be present in Path of Exile 2, but will be limited to attacks. This design choice encourages careful resource management of four spellcrafters, who will need to rely on alternative methods for mana regeneration. Also, achieving the critical strike cap, 100% chance to critically strike will be more difficult in Path of Exiles 2 compared to its predecessor. This adjustment aims to prevent overly dominant critical strike builds and promote greater build diversity. Jonathan also emphasized the importance of high tier item mods, feeling genuinely rewarding. He cited the example of Light Radius, which has a maximum tier of 6. This means that even high rarity items might not have the option to roll light radius, making its presence on an item a more significant find. Now regarding monster abilities. Jonathan revealed that currently, multi-projectile abilities from monsters will either all critically strike or none will. This differs from player abilities, where each projectile has an independent chance to crit. However, he indicated that this mechanic is open to change based on player feedback and further testing. Confirming a significant change from Path of Exile 1, Jonathan stated that bosses in Path of Exile 2 will have the ability to critically strike. This adds a new layer of challenge and unpredictability to boss encounters. He reiterated that this mechanic, like others, is subject to adjustments based on player feedback back during the testing phases. Jonathan highlighted a shift in the design of support archetypes in Path of Exile 2. Support characters will require more active gameplay compared to the often passive aura bot style in Path of Exiles 1. This encourages greater engagement and strategic decision making for players who prefer supportive roles. Then addressing the competitive aspect of Path of Exile, Jonathan confirmed the continued presence of the Slash Ladder Command, a legacy feature from the original game. While a dedicated ladder interface remains absent, he acknowledged the possibility of its implementation in the future. Additionally, he expressed openness to expanding ladder features, 
such as incorporating time to kill metrics for boss encounters, potentially leveraging API integration for data tracking. To accommodate potential significant changes to the passive skill tree, Jonathan assured players that a free full respect will be provided for all characters in the event of a major skill tree revision. This ensures that builds are not invalidated by substantial balance adjustments. Ascendancy skills will gain sockets for support gems as characters level, culminating a six link equivalent in the late 80s. Furthermore, skills inherently tied to specific items will have their support gem sockets integrated into the item itself, streaming the gearing process for those builds. And an important one, for players interested in low life builds, Jonathan confirmed that the threshold for low life will be 35% life, maintaining consistency with the existing mechanic in Path of Exile 1. He went on to address the movement skill. Jonathan stated that force move will function similarly to its implementation in Path of Exile 1. While there are currently no plans for a dedicated keybind, he expresses openness to adding one based on player feedback. Now regarding the new tower endgame mechanic, Jonathan clarified that each tower can only be used once. He assured players that the map density within a tower's radius will generally exceed the number of maps that can be affected by a tablet ensuring ample opportunities for strategic map selection and progression. Maintaining the traditional relationship between hardcore and softcore game modes, Jonathan confirmed that hardcore characters who die will transition to the softcore league, preserving the character progression in a less punishing environment. And while anticipating a massive influx of players for the free-to-play launch of Path of Exile 2, Jonathan believes that exceeding 1 million concurrent players during the early access phase is unlikely. Little does he know. However, Grinding Gear Games is actively preparing for a significantly larger player base at launch, having conducted internal testings with up to 1.6 million simulated players and aiming to optimize server capacity for up to 2 million players. Then, addressing community events, Jonathan confirmed that there will be no ExileCon in 2025. However, he expressed a strong commitment to future ExileCon events, recognizing their importance for community interaction and information sharing. Path of Exile 2 will also retain the existing predictive and lockstep networking modes offering players choices based on their preferences and connection stability. Additionally, a new hybrid mode will be introduced, combining elements of predicted networking, particularly beneficial for players who utilize WASD movement. Now clarifying the interplay between player item rarity and map rarity, Jonathan confirmed that these rarity modifiers are multiplicative increasing the overall chances of finding valuable items when both player and map rarity are high. Addressing concerns about guild persistence, Jonathan stated that the guild stash tabs will not transfer from Path of Exile 1 to Path of Exile 2. This is due to the separation of guilds between the two games, requiring players to recreate or join new guilds in the sequel. Finally, Jonathan provided a brief update on the development of the Path of Exile mobile. He stated that the mobile version is currently on hold with no confirmed timeline for its resumption or release. And this concludes the breakdown of the recent interview with Jonathan from Grinding Gear Games and Zizaren. Make sure to check out his channel. A link for the full interview will be down in the description and the pinned comment. We hope this detailed analysis provides valuable insights into the upcoming Path of Exile 2. We encourage you to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more Path of Exile 2 coverage as we approach its release. Fly safe and avoid local chat scams.